<laughs> uh, talking about electrical stuff, is there a method to get electricity up on the inner surface of the dome shell itself? Say if you wanted, do, do people put outlets up there or lights or things like that? Um, I can't tilt my computer up high enough here, um, but up on the very top near the, the about, eh, it's about two feet down from the edge of the cupola that we have upstairs. There's a square box up there. That's a junction box for what I perceive when I find the time and Tessa will agree with designing this hanging light fixture up on the top, uh, a sculpture basically. So I planned that out. There's a switch over here, and it's one of these switches with, what does this switch do? Well, it's for that outlet up on the top. Um, how do you get there? We have some low voltage wiring that actually runs through the joints in the triangle panels. So that's a low voltage wiring. But on a 110 volt circuit, you need to be an inch and a half back. Well, there's a line of struts. All these struts that we've got going up right here, that you can go to the top of the dome follow the strut line, staple it on the edge of the strut. And the inner two by four strut doesn't have a joint, doesn't have a uh, connector on it. So you just keep going right straight up. You don't drill any holes. You just staple it along the inside and go to where you want it. Yeah, if I could jump, jump in quick, Dennis, I kind of feel like uh, as far as electrical and plumbing go, it's the same as any other structure as far as you know how they how they uh, build them in. I mean, they don't really do anything special for a dome necessarily. So the second floor on the dome, as far as wiring is concerned, would be the same as the second floor on any conventional home as well. Uh, and likewise with the plumbing, it just uh, doesn't really, there's no special rules to follow. I mean, maybe the most complicated thing on the plumbing is if you need to put a vent from an exterior wall somewhere where it's got to kind of slope up the dome a little ways and come out. But for the most part, it's identical to any other home. So there's nothing complicated or more expensive or unique about it really. So you're looking here at uh, some overhead lights right in here. They're can lights that are in the ceiling of the main floor. You need to plan those out, whatever you want to shine on. But I'm going to point out that you don't really want any can lights in your shell of the dome. Um, Yes, we have LED lights these days, but you're actually in most cases breaking through a vapor barrier or an air barrier. You've got to seal that light fixture housing and it can't let interior air get into the insulated space. So we try to stay away from all can lights that protrude into the insulation space of the dome. That's one of the things that we talk about. But this dome has, uh, I believe, somewhere in the range of 90 electrical lighting outlets. So in the whole dome, that's a number that comes out of my head here just because I think I remember it. And these days, it's, it's really easy to do electrical work because you're dealing with LED fixtures, low, extremely low wattage, and you can run more lights on that circuit.